Hey everyone, it's Joe Isaias from The Automator, and uh, thankfully a subscriber wrote on one of our videos, uh, Yosef Mohammed, thank you for writing it, that there's this um, browser uh, library for the UIA model. And so in this, uh, thankfully, Descalada had actually, I think this is where you started, if I remember right, and, and we just never yeah. looked at it. We were so excited about the UIA overall, um, but when we looked into it, it was like, wow, you can, <laughs> you can and I'm going to say surprisingly easily, uh -huh. connect to the DOM and and do some stuff. And we're going to show you the way we would do it, right? Because right. there are some hiccups in it and this and that. But it's a really, I think, a really great find. And I'm, I'm really excited exactly. about it. Exactly. here. Let me go ahead and show my, my screen. And let me explain what happened. So we usually, most of the time, we're talk about the UIA interface, right? Now, the reason why I don't mention very often the UIA browser, even though I think if I remember correctly, that's the reason why Descolada created the UIA. That's why I said that was the right, first. Right, right, right. Okay. That, that's, that's, I didn't quite catch yeah. that. But, but he, we, we just totally he, disregarded it because we saw the other thing. We're like, oh my gosh, shiny object. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we never done no. that. Right. But the point is that you anything that you're doing with this particular library, this uh, interface, you can do with the main one as well. So every sure. time I was connecting right. to the to Chrome, I just did it through the UIA interface. Right. The only difference with this one is that it simplifies a lot of things, right? And it does very interesting stuff that we're taking. Interesting. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to uh, show right now. So uh, if you can take a look at how I have it, it the, um, the library comes with the UIA interface and the browser. If you are going to use the UIA browser, you have to include the UIA interface as well. You cannot have one without the other. Now, the UIA interface can be by itself standalone without the browser, but the browser cannot be without the UIA interface. That's why you see me including both there. But the first thing is that we, I just divided this into a few steps and I wanted to kind of like made it, make it as clear as possible. First of all, we go ahead and connect to the browser. In this case, I'm telling it which instance or which program I want to connect to. In this case, it's Chrome. Then I use the Navigate option to go to a website. And this is the part that is complicated because the Navigate option has a target title and a wait load timeout. That means that you can specify it. What is the title of the page that you're expecting after you navigate? That's a wait, a wait for uh, the UA, the object to kind of like know that it finished loading and it also has a timeout time so you can say hey wait for this target title for five seconds or something like that what i found is up to, up to just to clarify yeah sorry right. up to five it's not asleep. seconds no yeah. it's not asleep it's a is web up to but what i noticed is that he was not using the try catch statement so some of the variables that he was trying to access were not really available certain in certain times and then it would throw an error like i would get a, a message box saying that there was an error or something so that's the reason why i decided okay i'm going to navigate to the page but i will manually check that the page was loaded the way how i did that is that the browser object that i just created here so this browser object has a a, a property called the browser element and that element is a UIA interface element, the one that we have been dealing with, okay? So everything that you have learned how to use the UIA interface with this browser element, you can do it. Like we wait for an element to exist, find by, you can do all the functions that we have been playing with because it is the it is as if I had done, you know, the UIA interface, like get element from handle. I don't know if you remember that we do this very often, like, Chrome, and I could say Chrome get element from handle or HWMD or something like that. And that after I got the element from handle, then I was able to do find by path or find by expression. Yeah, that element here is what you get from one of those. So you could yeah, do we're anything. Still, you, right. We're still fully UIA. Right. Yeah, this is totally UIA. Now, this wait element exists. I just went to the page. I just went here, used the inspector tool, and I found any element that I thought, hey, that should not be missing from this page. And 
of course, you could wait for the document element if you want, but I noticed that there were like several document elements on this page. I was like, what? That That's weird. But let me see if I could target the one that I'm looking for. Ah, so now it's not working. Right, so what happened was that there is an element out here, if I remember correctly, let me see. Where is it? I don't know what is going on, but now when I'm, there, there's something that is stealing the focus of the whole thing. Uh-huh. But there was an element that I got. I don't know. I, I don't see it anymore. It was the main element. It was this guy. That's the one that I'm trying to target. And that that element, I said, okay, so if that element exists, I would assume that the page loaded already. That's the way. So that's what I'm doing right here. I just got the main information. I just copied it exactly from there. I just went ahead and said, you know, uh, you know, copy the the uh, if I remember correctly, the localized control type. I just copy that and I put it here, and I'm just waiting for that to exist. I made it that it's gonna wait until it finds it. it you can set a timeout but I just make it, as I'm navigating, I know that I'm going to the page, so I'm waiting for it. Now, after I'm there, and this is the part that is different, the browser element, the original one here, the original, has this JavaScript return through clipboard function that I was not aware of. What it does is, it executes JavaScript, so you can use execute any type of JavaScript. And if it returns a value, it would put it on the clipboard and then put it into this variable. So it's going to do, uh, it is a workaround. He's using a workaround to pass information from the browser to my script using the clipboard. That's what he's doing, which I, I didn't know that you could do that. I would alter that, what you just decided to say, from the DOM, right? Because that's the really exciting part. Is This is the interesting part. It's not a, only the DOM. At this point, I am doing the DOM, but I could execute any JavaScript that returns a value. So uh, we are going to leverage it to get something from the document, you know, from the DOM. But yeah, it's anything, any JavaScript that returns anything. So what I wanted to do was, hey, instead of interacting with the DOM through the browser, let's get the body element, get the whole HTML out of it. And now I can create our a, a com object that is for the document object and just shove the HTML into it. Of course, remember, if, you, if you're dealing with this HTML file com object, you should use the meta tags to get the query selectors and other interesting stuff um, for edge. If not, there's a few functions that might not work as you expect, but I just shoved that into the document. And now I could just use the query selector and do very advanced stuff with the querying that I would have to put in a string in here and I do not want it to do that. So at this point, I can do my inner text. I do my query selector. I do all the functions that I can do with document just like that. And let's test that out. So let's just go ahead and move to any other page, right? So one of the things before when we did our short video on using UIA to quote unquote web scrape, we cautioned people to say, hey, we wouldn't use this for our big industrial yes. scraping because you're using UIA and it's just quirky and you know it's complicated. This is a game changer when it comes to that because hey, yes, I can rip that entire page, shove it into the DOM, and, and now we are good to go. Money. Right. So, so how I would how I would phrase that is that I don't want to web scrape using the browser as an intermediary, which is what was happening with UIA. If right. I was using UIA, I was having the browser in between the DOM and, and my script. But with this line here, just this one line here, I, rem I get the whole DOM and now the browser, I can forget about it. And actually right. from that line First, on, you will not see the browser object anywhere. I'm just using right. my, my auto hotkey script to do whatever I want it now. Right. So if I run this script, what I should expect is that 
this is going to go to my automator page, do my stuff. And now notice that I'm getting this, tit this title, which is the one that is right here, this H2 that is right there. Uh, from, you know, from an, a normal query, query selector, if you know how to do selectors and do everything. Oh, and if you don't, you just get elements by ID or by tag name or whatever, right? Like it, Right, it, whatever it, you want to do, whatever yeah. feels is, better for you. To me, this is why I'm like, hey, I can almost literally take what you wrote here, tweak it slightly, but I don't need to have to learn UIA, right? right. I can grab right. it now, rip it, and I know the DOM well, so right. I, can, I can work very quickly. That's right. And now you do this once. So this section here of getting the DOM, you just do it once. And now with your document, you do you perform many actions to scrape information out. But you pointed something out. Hey, what if I want to interact with the page? You right. know, that's different, right? Yeah, it is a little bit different. So let's go ahead and talk about that one. Let me comment this out. I don't want to scrape stuff. This all of that has to do with scraping, and actually, even the getting the HTML. This here, the, the good thing is, on average, when you're updating it now, if you're updating a form and you have fifty things, that's a little different. But most people, you're you're setting a text in one thing, or setting a drop down, and then clicking a button. Right? On average, right. that is what's done a lot. Right. And so this, this here, be good for that. yeah. This is mainly for getting data out, but if I want to interact with the page itself, there is another function that is very interesting. It's JavaScript execute. And now that allows me to execute any JavaScript when I don't care about the JavaScript returning any values, which is the difference. This at the bottom is for things that return values and I want to interact with them. But this is for stuff that I want to just do. And one of the things that I that you were telling me, so, so can I click on a link? Yeah, sure. Because the point well, is, yeah. Do me a favor, and it'll be annoying. Bring up uh, the UIA tool, because that was the one we were looking at. Oh, right, like, yeah. Yeah, but so, Isaiah, you're talking about, I'm talking about the DOM, not the the UIA. And you're like. Oh, yeah. So you know, this is this is interesting. This, yeah. This, yeah. You, you, you were mind. like, yeah, you were like. I cannot understand that, but here you go. I'm like, shut up, Isaiah. I'm trying to ask you this question. <laughs> and I'm, and like, I'm like, oh, but you're you're no. are interacting no. with the dog. So, right. so here's the interesting part. Um, once you do this uh, connection with the UIA browser, how we're doing it here, you are definitely, and and UIA is doing this you are interacting with the document element yeah. of the page, which is weird. You, you said, but hold on. When I yeah, hover yeah, over really this, confused. I you still were like, confusing. Yeah. right. So, so, so I was hovering over that and you said, but hold on. It has a name. So let me, let me remove right. this. It has a name. I yeah. never said that. You said like, right. I, never I built said this that. page. Like, uh, it's <laughs> not there. Yeah. <laughs> right. You built the page. When did UIA get this information? Well, that's the interesting thing. The UIA, and now as time passes by, it is getting more and more integrated. Mm -hmm. Chrome and other browsers have accessibility stuff built into them. Right. So whenever you're creating the website, the, the browser itself creates the accessibility object, which now UIA is connecting to and getting data out of it but it's from the document object. The only thing is that it's not structured the same way as the DOM. It's the same information, but it's structured a little bit differently. And the data that you can get, whether it's a localized control type, the name, the data, the control type, all those things, you didn't create those, but the UIA, well, right. the browser is creating a UIA compatible kind right. of thing. Right. And and we both know that's what, because this we kind of got here because I was like, wait a minute. In the DOM, not not this DOM, but in the DOM, you do have locations of elements, and then right, use that. that is correct. And then we saw it here, and I'm like, <sighs> I was like, I <laughs> <see> <laughs> like, so like how can that be? Yeah. Like, what the heck? But um, yeah, so but now go ahead and show the your right for executing JavaScript. 
Right. So what we're going to do, let me forget about UIA for a second. Yeah, right. Because at this point. Years ago, not... I demonstrated this with IE because you can do right. this with IE. Yeah, exactly. JavaScript and do it. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Right. You know, so I didn't I, need it at the time, but I'm like, I right. Was, but this is this is yeah. very important. So here's the thing: I'm targeting just the a, the anchor object, right? So I'm gonna get the path to. Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant. I wanted to copy the selector, and what I was showing you is that if you go here and you say document query selector, you could just use a selector and use the click function you can do that right. or you can set values to stuff yeah. and stuff like that but you could click and i was telling you if you can do it here as you can see a new page just opened then that means that you can definitely do it with the other one so if i copy that and this is the funny thing i can definitely just copy paste it from here go here and i say javascript execute and just paste it there because, right, because I am, ex this, what I'm doing here is exactly the same as going into the console here and pasting it. See, and here, this is just a FYI from years, the DOM I have worked with a lot. And that example, like, I don't like using tools like that to tell me the path because it said like, what, the eighth child? Yeah, was yeah, exactly. It, it that, gave that you some, some weird thing. Yeah. But we know from what we already saw, we could loop over and get all the text from each one and say, hey, when you find the one that has this as right. the text, then click it. And like, I could I just, just simply it. say, you know, get me all the URLs inside this, uh, hold on, inside this thing, inside this class, inside the JoJo class. I don't know why you named yeah. it that, but yeah. <laughs> but I could get all the links inside the JoJo class and get only the number fifth, or the seventh. That's it. But I'm just saying, in this case, we could just grab anything that works in the console, right? Paste it up here, and that's exact. It's going to happen the same. So let me just go ahead and make sure that we are in a different page that is not the main page. And if I run this script, yeah, sure, it will go to the automator. And then it would click on the URL. So now I have the second, you know, the FAQ2 being right. clicked. So again, that is a game changer because now you can definitely, if you don't, if you feel that UIA is a little bit complex or whatever, or right. you are very fluent in using the DOM, right. the document, exactly. right. then you can just use the JS execute and execute any JavaScript in it. Now, just a little bit of a technical thing. The way how these um, functions work is by passing the JavaScript here on the title bar. So what I noticed is that yeah, I've, I've so because you, you can say JavaScript here right. and say alert. Right. This is a test. And that works just fine. So you will see an, an alert showing up. Okay, so you can put any JavaScript here on the title bar. That's what he's leveraging. That becomes a little bit of an issue if you have a script that you cannot take away the focus from it. Because when right. you do this, it takes away the focus from your program, yep. comes here, tries to do that. So you have to keep that in mind. If you, if you don't want something removing the focus from whatever you're doing, this is not 100% a good solution at the moment. But this can be worked on. We will discuss with Descolada to see if there's any ways of having this in a way that does not remove the focus away from whatever you're doing. So this was a very good, yeah. <laughs> I, I was really excited to see this. Um, and as you said, like, wow, that was, that was you know, uh, unexpected. But yeah. This so, is awesome. yeah, thank, thank you for that. It, like the video. If you learned something, it really helps us out. We get a lot more views if you like it. And then, it, of course, it encourages us to make more videos um, or subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of these cool updates. Thanks, everyone. See you Bye. soon.